students in the previous class we have discussed about transportation and transshipment problem in this lecture i am going to explain assignment and shortest path problem we can say the assignment problem is the special case of our transportation problem so the agenda for this lecture is assignment problem and shortest path problem so what is this assignment problem assignment problem arises in variety of decision making situations so the typical assignment problems involve assigning jobs to machines okay there are some jobs that has to be assigned to machines agents to task there are some agent there are task so agent has to be assigned to task sales personnel to sales territories there are some sales personnel these people has to be allotted different sales territories then contract to bidders so there are like this there are so many applications of assignment problem a distinguishing feature of this assignment problem is that one agent is assigned to one and only one task one task that is the assumption specifically we look for the set of assignments that will optimize the stated objective such as minimize the cost minimize the time or maximizing the profit so this is our objective function of our assignment problem so i have taken a sample problem from this anderson et al book the problem is like this a marketing research company received request for market uh, market research studies from three new clients the problem the company faces is the task of assigning project leader you call it as agent to each client task okay there is a there are some project leader is there there are some client is there so this project leader has to be assigned to different clients currently three individuals three project leaders have no other commitment and are available for the project leader assignment so the management realizes that the time required to complete each study will depend on the experience and ability of the project leader assigned three projects have approximately the same priority and management wants to assign project leaders to minimize the total number of days required to complete all three projects here objective function is to minimize the total number of days required to complete the projects if your project leader is to be assigned to one client only which assignment should be made that is a problem there are some project leaders there are some clients so we have to allocate this project leaders to the clients so so that the total project duration is minimized this table shows the estimated project completion time the unit is days for assignment problem for example how to read this the lead leader one if he is assigned to client one he may take 10 days to complete it if the project leader 1 assigned to client 2 he may take 15 days so the project leader 1 if he is assigned to client 3 it will take 9 days okay maybe the 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 specialization of the project leader may be on uh, client 3 project so that he is taking lesser time okay so the project leader 2 for client 1 he will take 9 uh, days you will consume 18 days for uh, client 2 5 days for client 3 similarly for project leader 3 he will take 6 uh, days for client 1 14 days he will take for client 2 and 3 days for uh, client 3 so here objective is we have to assign this project leaders to different clients so that the total completion time is minimized now the assignment problem i am going to represent in the form of network what is the network it is similar to our transportation problem here the way we have represented transportation problem in the form of network the same way we can represent assignment problem also in the form of network in the left hand side you see there are project leaders equivalent to rg nodes 
on the right hand side there is a destination nodes clients uh, only one project leader so 1 1 on the left hand side the right hand side also 1 1 1. So, for example, this 10 represents completion time in days what it says if the project 1 uh, if the project leader 1 is assigned to client 1 he may take 10 days what the 15 represents if the project leader 1 is assigned to client 2 he may take 15 days similarly 9 days. So, this is equivalent to our transportation problem context equivalent to supplies the right hand side is equivalent to demand you see only one person so that it is one the right hand side only one client so, so, so that the right hand side also one one. Now, here the decision variable is here the decision variable is binary. So, x i j can take only two possibility the value of x i j is equal to 1 if the project leader i is assigned to client j ok 0 otherwise there are 3 project leaders i 1 2 3 there are 3 clients j equal to 1 2 3. Due to the special structure of this assignment problem the x i j variables will be either 0 or 1 not any value in between that is the assumption for our decision variables it is a binary decision variables. Now, the first task is to write the objective function what is the objective function total number of completion days that has to be minimized. So, how if I say this is x 1 1 this is one decision variable the leader 1 is assigned to client 1. So, how many days you will take 10 days so 10 x 1 1 this is x 1 2 15 x 1 2 this is x 1 3 then 9 x 1 3. Similarly, 9 x 2 1 18 x 2 2 and 5 x 2 3 for the third project leader 6 x 3 1 plus 14 x 3 2 plus 3 x 3 3 ok. This is the value of objective function that has to be minimized. What are the constraints? Because the number of project leaders equal to the number of clients all the constraint should be written as equalities. But when the number of project leader exceeds the number of clients the less than or equal to constraint must be used for project leader constraint. So, this type of constraint has to be used where when the number of project leader is high then the number of clients. Here first we will write for uh, supply constraints that is for project leader. So, x 1 1 x 1 2 plus x 1 3 you can write equal to 1 or less than or equal to 1 there would not be any problem. That means, any one project leader can be assigned to any one client. So, these 3 are supply constraint these 3 are demand constraint you see that the demand constraints are equal to sign. Now, this is a complete form of uh, linear programming model for our assignment problem objective function 3 constraint for supply 3 constraint for demand and this value of x i j is binary. Now, I am going to solve this assignment problem with the help of solver. I have brought that assignment problem to solve in the excel solver. So, as usual I have written decision variables value of decision variables coefficient of objective function I have written all the constraint I have written the value of our objective function also. Then I go to data go to solver look at this this it is minimization problem changing cell is D 4 to L 4 you see that I have added these changings D 4 to L 4 is a binary that constraint is required. Then I have written all are equal to constraint you can write less than or equal to also, but equal to constraint also will work there would not be any problem. Now, when we solve it so the value of objective function is 26 we got value of uh, x 1 2 
equal to 1 and x 2 equal to x 2 3 equal to 1 and x 3 1 equal to 1. What it says? The leader 1 is assigned to client 2, the leader 2 is assigned to client 3 and leader 3, the project leader 3 is assigned to client, uh, client 1. So, that the what is the at present what is the total completion time 26. If you go for some other combinations your 26 may be uh, you may get some other uh, bigger than this number the minimum value is 26. So, now uh, we will go to the presentation. Now, I have brought the solution here. So, what what we are uh, uh, what solution we are giving see the market uh, the project leader 1 is assigned to client 1. What is the cost of that one? How many days you will take? You will take 15 days to complete it. If the leader 2 because why the x uh, the leader 2 is assigned to client 3 our x 2 3 value is 1. How much time he will take? 5 days. Okay. Then x 3 equal to 1. So, this 3 is assigned to 1. How many days will take? 6. So, 6 plus 5 11, 11 plus 15 26. So, the total time to complete uh, all the project uh, all the clients project is 26 days. Now, we can look at different variations of this assignment problem. There are three variation is possible. The first variation is total number of agents not equal to the total number of task. Here we have three we, we had um, three agents and three task this need not be equal. So, if it is not equal how to handle this I will explain. Another one the problem which you have written is minimization problem. In case if it is a maximization problem what to do? Then sometime there may be unacceptable assignments. Okay. Some project leader he may not be capable for doing certain clients jobs. So, there may be a restriction. So, how to bring these restriction into our traditional assignment problem? Now, we will see the first case. What is the first case? The total number of agents is not equal to the total number of task. If the number of agents exceed the number of task, then extra agents simply remain unassigned in the LP problem then there is no problem if there are more agents than the task. But if the number of task exceeds the number of agents, the LP model will not have a feasible solution. What is the meaning? That there are lesser people, but there are more projects. In this case, your LP will not have the feasible solution. In this situation, a simple modification is to add enough dummy agents. So, we have to add one more dummy agents to equalize the number of agents and the number of task. After adding that what you have to do? We are discussing about the total number of agents not equal to the total number of task. For instance, in the problem we might have had 5 clients. For example, see that I am having 5 clients 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and only 3 project leaders 1, 2, 3. So, what we have to do? By adding 2 dummy project leaders, I am giving some 2 lines here, right. 2 dummy project leaders, we can create a new assignment problem with the number of project leaders equal to the number of clients. When the both the numbers are equal, it is possible to get the feasible solution. Here the objective function coefficient in case for example, if you write this way the cost will be 0, the cost will be 0 for. So, the objective function coefficient for the assignment of dummy project leader will be would be 0. The value of optimal solution would represent total number of days required by the assignment actually made. So, what, it may, what, it, what is the meaning is no assignment will actually be made to the clients receiving dummy project leaders. Okay. That is the meaning of value of your dummy project leaders. The another variation is the maximization, the objective function is maximization or sometimes there may be unacceptable assignments. If the assignment alternatives are evaluated in terms of revenue or profit rather than time or cost, the LP formulation 
can be solved as a maximization problem rather than minimization problem. Simply instead of selecting minimization, just select maximization of our, our solver, you will get the solution. In addition, if one or more assignment are unacceptable, so some leader may not be having the expertise for doing certain task. So, the corresponding decision variables can be removed from the LP formulation. This situation should, uh, could happen for example, if an agent did not have the experience necessary for one or more of the task. So, this is our general linear programming model for our assignment problem. So, this also it is a minimization agents less than or equal to 1, the task should be equal to 1. Here the x i j is the binary value. Sometime there are more possibility of special cases in assignment problem. You, you can remember at the beginning of this, sec this section, we indicated that distinguishing feature of assignment problem is that one agent is assigned to one and only one task. In generalization of assignment problem, where one agent can be assigned, okay, that means one project leader for example, can be assigned two or more task. Okay. So, in that situation, your LP formulation of the problem can be easily modified. For example, let us assume for the project leader 1 could be assigned up to 2 clients. Okay. In this case, the constraint representing project leader 1, project leader 1 assignment would be x11, x12, x13 less than or equal to 2. That means, that project leader can be assigned to any 2 agents. In general, if A i denotes upper limit for the number of tasks to which agent i can be assigned. So, we can write sigma of j equal to 1 to n x i j is less than or equal to a because here 2 a, a leader can be applied a project leader can be applied for 2 projects. So, that we put less than or equal to 2. Okay. That is the modification in the assignment problem. Another one is if some task require more than one agent it is opposite of what you have discussed. Then the LP formulation can also accommodate the situation. What we have to do? We have to use number of agents required as the right hand side of the appropriate task constraint. The right hand side of the task constraint put equal to 1. Instead of that, so that uh, task may require may be 2 leaders, instead of that uh, uh, instead of 1 you have to put 2. Okay. That is the another special cases. Now, we will go to the, the next type of problem called shortest route problem. What is the shortest path problem? Okay. So, I have taken a sample problem from this Anderson et al book. What the problem says that a company has several construction sites located throughout say the area with multiple daily trips carrying personal equipment and supplies from company's office, this location is office from 1 to construction sites, the cost associated with the transportation activities are substantial. The travel alternatives between company's office and each construction site can be described by the road network shown in the figure. Okay. Suppose, this is he can go via 2 to 6. For example, he have to start from 1, he has to reach 6. There are different possibility 1 to 6, 1 3 5 6 or 1 2 4 6 like this. Remember the length of the arc is not necessarily proportional to the travel distance it represents. We are not uh, drawn this picture to scale. So, all roads are two way thus the flow may be in either direction. This is an assumption. What is the objective of a shortest path problem? The road distances in miles between the nodes are shown above the corresponding arc. For example, this 25 represents the road distance between 
node 1 and 2 is 25 miles. In this application, company would like to determine the route that will minimize the total travel distance between company's office that is node 1 and the construction site located at 6. So, between 1 and 6, okay, we should find out the shortest path that is the objective of the shortest path problem. This is a network, road network for companies shortest route problem. Now, we are going to introduce a concept here. So, the shortest path problem is the special case of transshipment problem. Okay. We have seen that already we have solved what is a transshipment problem, how to write the constraint for a transshipment problem. So, here the important point is the shortest path problem is the special case of our transshipment problem. So, what is the meaning all intermediary intermediate nodes for example, 2, 3, 4 and 5 we are going to consider as a transshipment node. Okay. Now, let us see a key to developing a model for shortest route problem is to understand a problem uh, that the problem is a special case of the transshipment problem. Specifically, the company's shortest route problem can be viewed as a transshipment problem with one origin that is node 1 and one destination node 6 and four transshipment nodes 2, 3, 4, 5. So, by having this idea in our mind, we are going to solve this problem. Now, I have brought our uh, transportation problem. This I am going to convert into a transshipment problem. What conversion is taking place? You see that there is a starting node, there is a destination node. So, 1 and 6 is there and in between there are certain intermediate intermediate nodes for 2, 4, 5 and 3. So, I have added double arrow for this these transshipment nodes. What are they? 2 to 3 I have put here double arrow, 2 to 4 I have put here arrow on both the direction, 4 to 5 there is a arrow on both direction because our assumption says that all roads are two way thus flow may be in either direction. The decision variable for a transshipment problem is x i j it is 0 and 1. The decision variable is binary. If the value of say for example, x 1 2 equal to 1 that means that we are traveling on the uh, route 1 2 2. If it is x 1 2 is equal to 0, I am not traveling that is the meaning of our decision variables. So, now we have to write the objective functions. So, we have to multiply each decision variables by corresponding its distance. For example, the here it is a 25. So, x 1 2 is 25. So, 25 x 1 2. Okay. Here when you look at this, this is x 2 4 and the bottom one is x 4 5. So, x 2 uh, 5 x 2 4 and 5 x 4 2. Like this, I have written x 4 2. Like this, I have written the uh, decision variables for all the nodes, then I have multiplied by corresponding the distance. So, then I am getting the complete objective function. Now, let us write supply nodes. Here one is supply nodes. Somebody standing here, for example, standing here, he can take root 1 2 2 or 1 2 3. So, how to write this decision in the form of equation? So, x 1 2 plus x 1 3 is equal to 1. Since it is a binary, a person can go x 1 3 or x 1 2, then only we will get equal to 1. That is why we have written supply nodes. The same idea is for the destination node also. There are three ways, there are three ways to reach 6. What are they? x 2 6, x 4 6, x 5 6, that is equal to 1. So, that means, if we are we, we can reach the node 6 by any one root that is why it is equal to 1. Now, I will write the uh, transshipment node constraints. For example, node 1 I have we have written already see node 2 is a transshipment node 
as I have discussed already the outgoing arrows are plus incoming arrows are minus. So, that will be equal to sin sorry outgoing arrows are plus incoming arrows are negative equal to 0. So, what are the arrows which are going outside x 4 2 is there x 2 4 x 2 4 is there then uh, x 2 6 is there yes x 2 6 is there then x 2 3 is there. Okay. So, for the node 2 what are the incoming arrows x 4 2 is there. So, x minus x 4 2. So, then another incoming arrows is x 3 2 is there x 3 2 is there and x 1 2 also is there that also incoming arrows. So, number of incoming arrows or sum of incoming arrows is equal to sum of outgoing arrows when you bring in the left hand side it will be negative. Similarly, I have written for all other transshipment nodes that is for 3, 4 and 5. Now, this is my complete LP formulation for our transshipment node. So, the objective function is minimization type. So, this is origin node and destination node corresponding constraint. There are 4 transshipment nodes there are 4 transshipment constraints. Now, I am going to solve this one with the help of solver. Now, I have uh, built a excel model to solve this shortest path problem. The idea is concept of transshipment node. As usual, I have written decision variables, then coefficient of objective function, then value of objective function I have written in a S4. So, if I go to data, then go to solver look at this it is a minimization problem. Here I did not include the binary constraint even if you include the binary constraint that would not affect the result it would not affect the result, but at present I will solve the same problem without including binary constraint then including binary constraint then what will happen now we will solve this problem without including binary constraints. So, solve it. Now, the value of objective function is 32. So, we got some values 1 for example, x 1 3 is 1, then x 3 2 is 1, then x 2 4 is 1, then x 4 6 is 1. Okay. This is our uh, the path that has to be followed. Now, I am going to add a binary constraint here, then I am going to solve it again. Let us see any differences there. So, go to uh, data solver. So, go to add constraint, you select F 5 to Q 5, select that, then you select is a binary B i n binary, okay. okay, binary constraint now we solve it. Okay. Now, you see even though if I am add if I am not adding binary constraints all the values are integers. Okay. So, it would not uh, affect it is better to have a binary constraint, but even though if you are not having binary constraint. So, this would not affect result, but you have to make sure that you are getting 1 1 there. Now, we will go to the our presentation. So, the constraint output says all the constraints are binding constraint now look at the answer. So, what is the shortest route? I have to start from 1 to 3. So, I have started 1 to 3, then 3 to 2, then I have to go to 3 to 2, this one, then I have to uh, go to 2 to 4, then 2 to 4, then 4 to 6, 4 to 6. So, the total distance is 32, 20 plus 3, 23 plus 5, 28 plus 4, it is a 32. So, this is the shortest route. What is the shortest route? 1, 3, 2, 4, 6. So, this is the way to solve a shortest path problem. What idea you have to remember? That the shortest path problem is a special case of your transshipment problem. That is the important point that has to be noted. So, the general linear programming mod, uh, formulation for shortest path problem is it is a minimization function 
the sum of origin node should be 1 and the similarly the sum of destination node should be 1 then you have to include a transshipment nodes. In this lecture we have taken two problem one is assignment problem another one is shortest path problem. In the assignment problem I have formulated in the form of uh, network from the network I have formulated linear programming model then I have solved with the help of excel. The same way I have solved the shortest path problem what assumption I have made is that the shortest path problem is the special case of your transshipment problem. So, I have included some more constraint for the concept of transshipment then I have solved with the help of solver. Thank you very much.